the Rosto model and trying to apply it to Tanzania. Here's Walt Rosto, he was an American economist who lived from 1916 to 2003, and he came up with his model of development. This is it, and his idea was that every society has to pass through these five stages um, in order to develop. So let's have a look at each of the stages he proposed. Each country should start as a traditional society with subsistence farming, that means just growing food for yourself, um, hunter gathering, um, where you go out and collect food and hunt animals, and um, very little trade going on. Um, society will develop to the next stage, the preconditions for takeoff, and this is where they're making some things within um, the country. Um, if you make things to sell them, roads and networks for doing so will emerge, electricity will expand across the country, and international trading of these goods, the things that you're making, um, will take place. We then move to takeoff. This is rapid um, intensive growth, um, cities and towns are growing and large scale industrialization, that's factories, manufacturing, um, making things for the society that's getting increasingly wealthy. Then we move on to the drive to maturity, stage four. Um, industry diversifies, and um, diversifies just means you get lots of different kinds um, of industry emerging. Um, investments are, made, are being made in infrastructure. Infrastructure is just things that crisscross the country, like gas, electricity, water supplies, and telephone wires. Um, people's quality of life is improving within the country. And then finally, um, the most developed countries in the world, um, such as England, France, Japan, USA, Germany, and Canada, um, in these countries, um, goods are mass produced for wealthy people who want lots of goods within their houses. And there's lots of trade going on to provide people um, with these goods. So that is the Rosto model. That is with, with, that's what Rosto believed each country has to go through um, to become developed. Now, how does Tanzania follow um, the Rosto model? Well, um, this diagram shows the GDP growth. So gross domestic product is the total amount of money that the country is earning. And this shows the percentage change in GDP um, since about 1990-1995 time. Now we can see um, that the growth of the country is a more sort of zigzag line, zigzag development, instead of just being a straight line of improvement. And as the country develops, you get bad things occurring, which will slow down development. So here's a couple of them. In 1979, um, Tanzania was at war with Uganda. Now, because of the war, they'd have been making less money, less development could have occurred, and the country might have even gone temporarily backwards. Um, there we have it in 2009, and the Prime Minister had to resign following a corruption scandal. Again, this would have slowed down development because industries might not have had so much, so much confidence um, to invest if a new government um, is having to come in. You also get some really good things going on which boosts development of a country. A new gold mine opening will provide lots of jobs and money. Major gas reserves being discovered off the coast, again, um, is a boost to the economy. So rather than development sort of occurring in a linear fashion, um, there's a strong feeling that development actually might skip step, steps or take dif a different path or even be done in this zigzag um, sort of way. Now, some people say that Rosto's model doesn't suit the poorer countries, the developing countries of the world. I've already mentioned this zigzag development, um, but Rosto also assumes that all countries have an equal chance to develop, disregarding their population size or their location or their natural resources. Um, and there's a big suggestion that it cannot be applied easily um, to developing countries. 
So, for example, a country could be developing and then industries might have to close down within the country, which um, could slow the development. Finally, um, there's a feeling that bottom up approaches can also work, not just top down approaches. So a country could become self-sufficient through local effort, efforts. Is the urban industry actually necessary to develop? So even though there are these question marks over whether Rostow's model can be applied to poorer countries, um, the Rostow model is still one of the most widely cited development theories.